Hey, I'm Josh, welcome to the channel. If you need some storage, shelving is a good way to do it. So today I'm gonna to show you three ways how you can build some shelving in your home. All right, got my material gathered. Some of it I just picked up from Home Depot, like that two by 12, uh, this melamine. This is left over from the upstairs project. I got some banding for it here to finish the edge. Got some shelf brackets from Home Depot and uh, had these ones, so we're gonna use those. And we're gonna have some fun with these black iron pipes. So let's head upstairs and I'll show you where the first shelf is going. All right, this is where the first shelf is gonna go, right above this dresser here. Uh, that way the girls have some additional spots to display their art and different things. Make this dresser a little less cluttered. So this one we're going to use those white shelf brackets that I had. Basically all we got to do is find the studs. We're going to have to put the shelf I think right below this um, right below this thermostat. Basically I'm just going to run my stud finder across there and make some little marks at the center of the studs at about that level and then I'll take my level and make level marks right above those stud marks. So when you're using a stud finder, they usually start lighting up right on the edge of the stud. And so what you wanna do is go till it lights up and then go over three quarters of an inch. And that will be the center. You don't wanna mark it right where um, it lights up because that's just the edge of it. There we go. I like to try to make the marks as small as possible and nice and light that way uh, you can't really see them and the shelf bracket and the shelf should cover everything also I like to make sure that I flip my level in for end every time I'm making new marks along the wall because then you're only out the uh, amount that your level might be out all right so then when you put your shelf bracket on there what you're gonna do use some sort of straight edge on top and uh, kind of bridge that gap to the corner so you can uh, hit that line. Basically, that line's gonna be the bottom of my shelf. Now, if you don't have a good eyeball, I'd put a level on there uh, and get a plumb line straight up and down, but I've got a pretty good eye for level, so, and plumb. Penis. All right, now I'm just gonna go the full length of this dresser, tight to the wall. So let's go six to nine inches. Will look just fine. Yeah. Uh, Sixty-nine. So after the edging's on, I'm going to try to con Allison into doing that. Um, we got to put some little screws down underneath here. So there's three screw holes on each bracket to go into the shelf. That'll just keep this from sliding around. So let's move on to the next one. All right, so next we're going to be putting a shelf in this little hall closet. Um, and this one, we're going to use a little different brackets. It's got a little loop on it. It holds a closet rod, which will be really helpful, um, you know, as your kids grow up, their kit clothes get bigger, they outgrow with space. So we need some more hang-up space. Get out of here! You too! I gotta get this cleaned out. Alright, so this is gonna be same song, different verse. Gonna mark out my studs. And uh, this one, we're gonna put the shelf right up close to that roof line. And we're gonna do a 16 inch shelf. We're not gonna go the full two foot because uh, with the hang up rod, I wanna be able to hang up easy as an adult. You know, the kids being shorter probably wouldn't have a problem, but we just wanna be able to get in there easy. So it'll be a 16 inch shelf. So I'm gonna mark out the studs real quick. And then I'll show you what the uh, loop brackets look like. All right, shelf brackets are in. Now, unfortunately, because of how small these doors are, 
I'm going to have to two piece the uh, shelf. So I'm going to have to split it basically on one of these hangers or I guess it could overhang and cantilever in the middle. Maybe I'll do that. I think that actually might be better. So I'll figure out the length of this and uh, cut the length and then just cut it right in the center and uh, have it cantilever in the middle. That'll be just fine. Safety splints are not working very well today. All right, I'm gonna try to get this closet rod in here first because I think it'll be difficult with the shelving in. Yeah, that's perfect. Joined in nice and flat there on the where it cantilevers. If you had issues with uh, a joint like that being smooth, what you could do is there's some little uh, like flat brackets that you could screw in from the bottom side, and it would you know even those things out. But I'm happy with that. I must have got the bra the shelf brackets in there nice. So now we just gotta fill these holes down here with some little short screws. Put some short screws into the closet rod. I'm gonna use these, they're a half inch long. All right, got the little screws in. So that closet's done, sweet. I mean, still gotta build doors. All right, let's go to the garage. We're gonna build a shelf down there, a little bit different technique uh, using a ledger board. All right, so here's the next spot. We're gonna do some shelving. So moved a little, little Angus out here. Um, it has been very nice to have him out here and you know what, he likes it. So anyway, we wanna be able to use this space a little better. So we're gonna do shelf right above the kennel and then one about halfway up, halfway in between. There's really no way to do a two foot wide shelf um, without having giant brackets unless you do a ledger. So what we're gonna do is do like a one by four ledger across like that and it's gonna span the full 36 inches, 40 inches, whatever it is, um, which is kind of a big span but we'll just be careful on what we put on there. Also, home gym, check it out. Allison's been parking in the garage. Yeah. One by four is actually three and a half because, you know, milling and all that good stuff. So I'm going to measure four inches up off this kennel. That way I got a little half inch clearance. Slide that bad boy out of there. Basically, I'm just going to use my level and uh, make a level line all the way around. And then we're going to use the sub finder, try to find the studs, make sure that's all good. And... Measure, cut, screw it to the wall. These bits are awesome. All right, on this side, this uh, cabinet side's three quarter thick or so. And so I gotta be careful on uh, how long a screw I put in. I'm using scrap material, so there's a little bit of that, but. Only Angus is going to be able to see it, and uh, yeah, he may curse my name, but that's all good. So for this ledger, I got these little one-inch cabinet screws. I'm going to pre-drill a few holes. I think we'll go with, uh, I do six, because these aren't going to go through very much, only about three-eighths of an inch, and uh, there's a panel there. 
We'll try it. We'll see how it feels. If, uh, if I need to, I can try to find some inch and a quarters. But I really don't want to puncture through the other side of that wall. Yeah, I don't like that. I didn't realize there's uh, it's like an eighth inch or quarter inch skin on the outside of this cabinet. So that's actually an inch thick. These are only going into the skin. So I'm going to go and grab some inch and a quarter screws. All right, I ended up using these screws here. Inch and quarter, little uh, square drive. Just using what I got to, uh, you know, reduce cost. Pretty good. Ideally, you'd want something that was like recessed like this, but it's all good. It doesn't matter. All right, on this one, what I'm going to do is uh, mark out where the stud is there, and then I'm not going to hit a stud out here because uh, I don't want this ledger board to run past the shelf. We're going to use some of these. These are the best drywall anchors. They're these uh, metal ones that screw in. They grab really good and they hold a lot of weight. Alright, so I'm just going to hold it here on the line. Mark it with my drill here. Perfect. Then, just zip these guys in. These things are friggin' sweet. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna knock out this other ledger for the shelves in my way, and then we'll get to cutting shelves. All right, ledger is all on. Now you can make this as nice as you want you could caulk the seams if i'm doing this like on a nice finished closet i would actually spackle all the screws a couple times and sand them to make them all smooth paint all this stuff before the shelving goes on maybe even caulk the edges but this is a garage so it's going to stay like this one thing i'm going to do is try to get these pieces cut as close as possible you know within a reason because, uh, you know, there's only three quarters of an inch here. And so if you're off a bit, that can really cause problems. And a lot of times, um, these corners in the houses are not square. So check this out. See that big old gap there? And then this, this side's actually the opposite. See that big old gap there? So if I would just measure the front and the back, you know, they might come out the same measurement, but it's way out of square. So I need to account for that in my cuts. So basically what I'm going to do is hold my square here. And I'm going to measure that um, difference there from zero to there. It looks like it's mostly in the first, you know, eight inches, 10 inches or so. Which makes sense because a lot of times in those corners, the way they're mudded, kind of get a curve out into the corner. This side looks like an even angle. So I'll measure the difference in that corner. So let me get all that measured out. And then I'll show you how I lay it out on the piece that I'm cutting. All right, so there's kind of my measurements, I guess. You can add it this way. Carpenters never have paper, you just have random crap to write on. At the wall, it was zero on the square. And then 10 inches out, it was a quarter, but it might have been a little strong quarter. So I went a little bit more, and then at the end, it was like 3 sixteenths. So you can see, since it was zero there, we got to cut back to get this to come over to the wall. So. This one's going to be kind of a curved cut. So I'm going to cut that first, and then pull my measurements down, and then put the square on it and see how, how uh, it looks with this eighth inch difference from the front to the back. That's about what it was open in the back. So I think we're good. Get lined out on my front measurement. And this back was supposed to be a little bit, a little bit longer. So. I think that's perfect. I'll draw that line, cut it, 
All right, well, it's pretty good. Uh, this side fits really good. This side, I'm just gonna describe it here. And yeah, not as much of a curve in it as I thought, but I'll shave that down and it should look pretty good. Yeah, that's better. Ain't perfect, but it's also a garage, so not too worried about it. I'm gonna get this one figured out and then uh, we'll countersink some holes, some uh, inch and a half screws, screw that down. All right, pretty happy with how that turned out. Back up a little bit for you. Yeah, it's a good little storage spot. So I made this one tall on purpose because I want to be able to fit the stroller in there sideways. And then this is still tall enough to fit that size bin, which we use a lot of, which would be great. So now I'm just going to use the countersink, drill some holes, and then I'm just using some inch and five eighths and drywall screws. And uh, don't need a lot in there, just a handful of them. We get that done, and we'll move on to the final shelf. All right, so the final shelf is gonna go right here above this desk. We're gonna use these like black iron pipe things. These are actually shelf mounts, so these uh, flanges and stuff are not like pipe grade or whatever, but they're cheaper that way. Um, and then we're gonna use a two by 12. We're gonna go two foot up from the desk and uh, I actually built this desk out of some scrap metal and uh, Ikea top. Kinda of cool, can't really see anything because it's covered with stuff. But anyway, we're gonna try to help the girls out here by giving them a little more storage to get organized. <laughs> Going to Mount Crumpet to dump it. <laughs> All right, so I just measured up from this surface up to the hole. It was a half inch. Measured up from my level line there, that half inch mark. Put it on the wall and then marked all the holes. So the center one's not going to be in a stud, but the end ones will. And I think it should be stout enough. I'm going to use some more of these uh, hollow wall anchors. Get all those zipped in. And then, uh, yeah, we'll put these on there. And I did get some more galvanized pipe if it looks stupid having the short ones on with that 2x12. We'll see. Daddy, can you get out of here? I'm videoing right now. I'm videoing right now. All right, it looks okay. I think I still might swap those out for the longer ones. I'll see what Allison thinks. I did run my router with a super dull bit <laughs> around the edge there to angle it off a little bit and uh, we'll probably stain it dark to kind of match the desktop there but yeah those little uh you know pipe flange things are kind of cool give it a nice cool look but anyway yeah there's three ways you can build shelves brackets you can do a ledger or you can use these little pipe flange things all great ways to increase your storage. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And I'll leave links to all the tools that I can down below that I use on this project. All right, see you next time.